Muhammad وسلم, you have summited the hill of impeccable character. Everybody had to say he is the best person, foe and friend, ally and adversary. And the truth be told, your goodness is measured by what your enemy says and not your friend. So the enemies were compelled to say that Muhammad Sallallahu is the greatest human. Now listen to this. They would say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wal'iyadu Billah, Wal'iyadu Billah, is a soothsayer, is a magician, is a fortune teller and whatever. And then when they have something to entrust valuable, they come and give it to him. This is documented, it's right across. Muslim authors or non-Muslim authors. So they would say the most nasty things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yet the character of the message the Sallallahu was so amazing that they would come and leave their valuables in the care of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have summited the hill of impeccable character. Often we find that a person is fairly dignified, fairly respectful, but if you provoke him or you incite him or you push him in a corner and then he goes into defense, then oh boy, oh boy, you see an ugly side of this man. Let him lose his temper and then you see such an evil side of him that you simply cannot reconcile those words with that individual. In English, they say he who angers you conquers you. So there was a person who was a non-Muslim and he was a priest, Zaid bin Su'ana. And then he said, I studied everything about the Messenger Sallallahu And I said, no, this man is a prophet. There's no doubt. But I had my reservation on two things and I need clarity and transparency on it. Number one, that his forbearance and his perseverance surpasses his anger. And the more you provoke him, the more composed he is. The more you incite him, the more calculated he is. Zaid bin Su'ana said, so I wanted to test him out. So I came out, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with Ali radiallahu anhu. A villager came and he said, O Prophet of Allah, I've invited my nation to Islam. And I told them prosperity will come your way, but adversity has fallen in their lap. Can you give me some money so I can help them? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I don't have anything. He asked Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu said, I don't have. So I stepped forward, Zaid bin Su'ana, who was not a Muslim at that time. I said, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, he was not a Muslim, but this was an exercise he was carrying out to study. I can give you money and an agreement was made, X amount will be given and it will be paid on a date. Nabi Sassim agreed, Nabi Sassim took the money from him, gave it to the individual and he said, distribute it amongst your people and give them hope and encouragement, etc. And the individual left. He said two days before the duration had lapsed, there were two more days of grace left for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to offset the debt. I came to him and I said, Yabna Abdil Mut Talib, ma uriftum illa mutla. Oh, the grandson of Abdul Muttalib, you have not paid me my money. And you people are known to procrastinate when it comes to settling of debts. And Umar ibn al Khattab anhu, was sitting next to the Prophet. Wasallam, and Umar anhu's eyeballs were turning rapidly. And he said, Oh, enemy of Allah, are you literally blurting what you blurting to my Prophet? And the Messenger wasallam, said, Umar, Umar, Ana wa huwa kunna ahwaj ila ghayri hadha. Umar, Umar. Neither he nor me needed that response. We both could do with a different response. Wow, wow. Two days were still left. The duration had not lapsed. The message of Salah was being provoked. But look at the calmness. Look at the calmness. Omar, you should have told me, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa zid wa tahannan. Recite durood and salawat on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Omar, you could have told me to be more prompt in paying my due. And you could have told him, O oh Omar, that he must be more polite when asking his right. Now, Omar, you take him and give him what I owe him and give an additional 20 dirhams in lieu of the harsh speech. Akhlaq. It was character that just broke through. In English they say, when you cannot change what's happening, 
then change the way you react to what's happening. That's where the power lies. Regardless of what people tell us, we're responsible for the manner in which we react. We can be better or better. As Umar is walking with this man, Zaid bin Su'ana says to Umar, you know me. Umar is like, I don't want to know you. I, that's not the actual words, of course. I'm paraphrasing. Like, you know, the way you spoke to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you know, you know the priest, Al-Hibr, that's me. So Umar radhi said, but what drove you to speak to my prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like this? So then he said, oh, Umar, I did this to examine the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'm convinced that he is the prophet of Allah. I make you my witness that I bring iman, and half my wealth is charity in the path of Allah. It was character that just broke through. It just broke through. The stories are too many. I met a brother in Paris myself by the name of Ali. And he told me, Sheikh, you will never forget my surname. So I said, why? He said, because my surname is forget. He said, I took the Shahada. For 20 years, I prayed every day to Allah to give my mom Hidayah and I only displayed character to her. I never gave her active da'wah once. Every day I prayed to Allah and I used to just give her akhlaq, the character of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the age of 93 on her hospital bed, she called me one week before she passed away. He told it to me myself. One week before she passed away. And she said, Ali, I want to accept your faith and die like you. Character. I'll leave you on this note. We are more concerned about our reputation than our character. Reputation is the perception of others about us. Character is what we actually are. Reputation will get you married, but it takes character to keep you married. Reputation will get you employed, but it takes character to keep you employed. It's easier to impress the whole world than your spouse, but it's more important to impress your spouse than the whole world. Reputation is the perception of others about us. Character is what we are.